You might think that painting a rainbow with watercolors would be pretty simple, but it took me several tries to make it look even a little bit realistic. In this video, I will show you the easiest way I discovered to create this soft, misty rainbow in mountains. So let's get started. I stretched 140 pound Arsh watercolor paper onto my board and right now I'm wetting the upper corners to create wet and wet storm clouds. I'm using indigo with a little bit of burnt sienna to create the dark neutral color. I will have a list of all the supplies I used in the video description. By the way, the idea of a rainbow landscape was suggested by one of my subscribers. So if there is something you would like to see me paint, please leave a comment below. Now I'm just tilting my board to let the paint flow downward and soften. You can see some of that lovely granulation from the burnt sienna. I'm adding a little more paint to the corners because it will dry much lighter and I want it to look nice and stormy. I'm using my Aqua Mist spritzer bottle here to add a fine mist and encourage a little bit more flow. I'm using a tissue to sop up that drip along the side and to clean off the tape. A little more tilting and then I leave it alone until it's completely dry. It's completely dry now and for this next layer I'm painting the distant mountain. I want to have a defined ridge shape that disappears towards the bottom. So I start by wetting the shape of the mountain and then taking that water down the paper. I'm using the same rain cloud color and painting it to that edge that I created with the water. I'm not painting all the way to the edges of the painting, I'm letting them disappear into the mist. Now that I have the ridge defined, I am darkening it and slightly tilting my board to encourage the paint to flow down. You don't want to make it too wet to create drips, just a soft, diffuse blending into the wet paper. There's a little bit of streakiness, so I'm gently using the tissue to blot it. Once again, I wait for the paper to completely dry, then I start the next mountain. Since this mountain is closer, I will intensify the color a little bit. I add a tiny touch of perylene green to the mixture. And on this one, I decided to paint directly on the dry paper and soften the paint with a damp brush. This gave me a little bit more control of the intensity of the pigment without making it too watery. I got a drip after tilting it, but that was easy to fix with a little more water and a blotting tissue. Again, I waited for the paper to completely dry, and then it was time for the make it or break it element of painting the rainbow. I'm cleaning off my plate and I use alizarin crimson, Windsor yellow, Antwerp blue, and Carbazole violet. I'm re-wetting the entire paper. I was just going to wet the area around the rainbow, but I was afraid of getting a subtle water line where it dried, so I just very carefully wet the entire paper. I waited for the water to soak in a little, and this is really important to get the soft, fuzzy effect. If you start painting too soon, the paint is uncontrollable and moves everywhere. If you let the paper dry too long, then it won't blend seamlessly. You want the paper to be just glistening, but not too shiny. So when my paper was the right level of damp, I started with the crimson and just brushed it in an arc to just below the second mountain, going right over the top of it. I go back and forth to get a consistent color and fix any edges that are too fuzzy. You have to work quickly before the paper dries. Luckily, Arsh Cold Press is dream paper because it will hold the water longer and more evenly than any other paper I've used for wet and wet effects. 
So after adding the red, I mixed alizarin with the yellow to make the orange and added this just to the bottom edge of the red. I also go back and use my clean, slightly damp brush to manage the edge of that red arch. Then I add the cool bright yellow and I love how it looks in that top corner over the rain cloud. Now some mixed green, then the blue, then the violet, and make sure each color is slightly touching and blending with the one next to it and there's no gaps. Once the rainbow was done, I could stop holding my breath and the rest of the painting was just fun. I put back on my plate indigo, perylene green, burnt sienna, and Windsor lemon for the sun-drenched hills. I'm again wetting the hill shape to just above the end of the rainbow and I start with the bright yellow and then I add perylene green, indigo, and burnt sienna. I'm just scribbling the color on, doing a little blending, but I also need to let it do its thing and not overwork it or overblend. Once that's dry, I add the next layer. Do you sense a pattern here? <laughs> this next hill will be darker than the first one and I use slightly thicker concentrations of my paints.
I could have left it alone here, but I decided to add another hill with some pine trees. This was done, of course, after the previous layer had dried. I made it even darker, then while it was wet, I used my rigger brush to create some pine trees that blended into the hill. Adding flying birds in a misty rainbow mountain landscape is never not a good idea. I drew them in pencil first, then carefully used indigo and my rigger brush to paint them in. I decided the hill needed to be a little darker, so I changed that, and then I was happy with the final painting. If you want to try to paint rainbows yourself, get some practice on small pieces of paper until you can be confident in the wetness of the paper and the brush technique. It was the most challenging part of this painting, but everything about the clouds, mountains, and sunny hillside was so much fun, I will definitely be painting something like this again. And I really hope you do too. And if you do, I would love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at at oralessonjack. Also, don't forget to leave a comment below what you would like to see me paint. I do drawing and painting videos every week, so be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.